33 physicians from local hospitals uh, around Miami. We had males and females. These were the specialties. Uh, we, um, this was a survey study. We had a wide array of specialties. Um, so we had a structured interview, actually, where we sat down and talked to the physicians. Um, and these were the kind of questions we asked them. And let me just go over some of the findings. Um, not a majority, but not a large majority. Okay, 59% of the docs felt that the internet helped patients and actually empowered them. Okay, but 59% agreeing means that 41% didn't agree. Okay, found that the internet was in fact detrimental. Um, the ones who were positive thought that it helped patients ask better questions, um, be, be their, you know, be their own advocate, uh, understand their condition, education or medications more. Um, but they also thought that it depended on the individual, what their skills and abilities were, okay. uh, the online source that was being used, and how the information was being used. Um, and um, here's some of the quotes um, in terms of asking them how they thought patients could be better prepared for an office visit. By the way, it was interesting. When we looked at the doctors who were not so positive about this, they tended to be um, the older doctors. But the younger doctors were much more positive than the older ones were. Uh, but I thought this was a very, uh, a very good quote, um, that the internet does not actually uh, replace medical school and residency. Uh, some people think that if they go online, they become a specialist. And they now have a degree and are specializing in diabetes or hypertension. Um, right here. Yeah. Okay. Um, so let's skip over this. And you have that time. This is okay. So in, in closing, I think um, our results from our research and that of many of our colleagues uh, suggest that technology does hold promise for improving health care delivery for older adults and their families. But I think we have a long way to go. And I think there are certain barriers, and my research, and our research, um, shows very clearly that there are still barriers to meaningful access and use of technology for both consumers as well as providers. Okay. And we actually, the CREATE team, uh, I have to do this, actually has a book that we just published. It's our second edition. Um, where we have design guidelines um, for older adults. Thank you. Philipses 
all the way to small startup companies uh, that came out of academic groups uh, similar to, to, to uh, some of yours, as well as aging service providers. And our mission is to accelerate the, uh, the development, validation, and evaluation of technologies. Basically, our mission is to get engineers and clinicians and nurses to talk to each other and to create an environment that helps us develop technologies that could be used or would be used by the end users, seniors as well as nurses, and that fit into the operational needs of aging service providers to solve some of the problems that, that Sarah has uh, so eloquently uh, pointed out in some of the products and some of the, 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 uh, the things that we see uh, on the market today. CAST came about uh, back in 2002, was created out of scenario planning that Leading Age, or ASA at the time, conducted with the Wharton School of Business, which identified technology as one of the key uncertainties that may change the field of aging services or the aging services sector completely. So here we are today, and since inception, we focused on four primary areas. The first one is uh, pilots for applied research uh, to identify the needs of the different user groups. As I said, seniors, uh, uh, professional caregivers, family caregivers, as well as aging service providers, and to conduct uh, applied research in real living settings where uh, designers, get together with the users and apply a user-centered design approach uh, to develop prototypes, conduct focus groups and evaluate these prototypes, and then take that and, and uh, deploy it in the uh, real-life settings and evaluate the impacts, uh, the efficacy, cost-effectiveness, fit into operational needs, and so on and so forth. The second focus area for us is uh, advocacy, of course, identifying the barriers for the adoption of these technologies and advocating to remove the, those barriers both at the state and the federal levels. Uh, early on, we uh, realized the importance of uh, developing standards for electronic health records that take the unique requirements and needs of aging services sector and geriatric care into consideration. For example, standards for functional assessment, which is only talked about primarily within the aging services uh, sector to ensure that the national electronic health records that are going to be implemented take into account the needs of uh, our sector. Finally, education, raising awareness to available solutions, what works, what doesn't work, what's, what's uh, about to, to, to become a reality, and what is really in the uh, pipeline. The best way to uh, show you what NAST is all about is to, to show you the CAST vision video which we produced for the White House Conference on Aging. They say a, a, a picture is worth a thousand words. I think, I believe this video is probably worth more than a million. So, let's go ahead. Doctors and his staff. 
caregiver networks relate two things. It's the family and the professional caregiver 